A friend in needs, a friend indeed. A friend with weed is better. better. A friend I with breast than all the rest. A friend who's dressed dressed in leather. A friend in needs, a friend indeed. A friend who'll tease is better. Our thoughts compress, which makes us blessed and makes for stormy weather. A friend in needs, a friend indeed, my Japanese is better. And when she's pressed, she will undress, and then she's boxing clever. A friend in needs, a friend indeed, a friend who bleeds is better. My friend confessed she passed the test, and we will never sever. Days dawning, skins crawling. Days dawning, skins crawling. Pure Morning, pure morning, pure morning. I'm done with that bullshit. That was, that was placebo. Pure morning from 1998 off the album. Without you, I'm nothing. I remember a few words, but not as many as you. No, it's a classic album. No, I remember the song. I remember yeah. going to see them, I think, placebo at a big day out. Oh, I did too. That would have been 99. Uh, 98? 98, when the album came out. It was late 90s. Yeah. I saw them too. And I really liked Placebo Black back then. They were awesome. That was a good song. I just couldn't remember. You know why I sang that one? Oh, here we go. I'll tell you why. Because this week we're joined by Rocket Russell. <laughs> and, this, and this is Invert the Y. Captain's log, Stardate log, 12.1.5.9 in the USS Invert the Wise orbiting another planet of retro and bullshit. And the reason why I sang that one, Rocket Russell, is because you were a friend indeed, because I was a friend in need. And you stormed, you, you braved the stormy weather. You went out there, got me milk, got me a Subway sandwich and two cookies. And coffee pods. <laughs> and coffee pods. And, and had to deal with Samsung. And you had to deal with Samsung. Uh, I mean, I agree with you with what you said with Samsung. Like, I had that experience I was telling you about where the guy who says to me, um, you know, your, your Android update, I'm really sorry that your your SMSs can't work anymore. That's not our problem. That's Google's problem. And, you know, you just need to deal with it and you need to turn this off and this on and all this shit. And I'm like, mate, this is ridiculous. And my, then you, My problem is, and I find it so much... Retail people nowadays think their shit doesn't stink. And? They treat people like dicks. Now... And they think... They're you, above everybody else yes. and that you're a complete fucking idiot. Now... Yes. My work involves me playing with electronics. I'm... I look, I'm no mechatronic engineer. I have enough to know how to do stuff and get me through out of trouble. When somebody who works in retail who has never done anything techy in his life starts trying to fucking tell me tech things, make sure you get them right. You know, if you're going to say this and then and then when I pull you up, you go, oh, fuck, hang on. He actually knows what he's talking about. Yep. I'm just going to be a complete dick now. I can be the bigger dick. Yep. This is the guy who spent a couple of hours this week on the RTA website and can actually get the dump plate DCK 24-7. As a number plate, and is contemplating it. You are? Yeah. What is it? DCK? 247. Dick 247. I would do that. I I'm, would do that. I'm thinking it's worth the but 108 you know, bucks I almost, a year. I almost convinced colleagues that I used to work with to get a personalised licence plate for someone, and it was called Freedom, but it was three, as in freedom, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was three, the, the number three, double E-D-O-M, because everyone around here doesn't say three the way they suppo- they're supposed to say it. They go free instead of three. Well, so you- I would have just fit it in perfectly. But I've got my personalised plates. I'm not... They're too expensive now. Oh, they're they? ridiculous. 108 bucks a year. Yeah, see, so when I got mine, they were 181 off. And that was it for the lifetime of the plates. I don't, pl- I don't pay for them. But yeah, 108 bucks a year. To I bought it. a car many... Do you remember my black XR8? I remember that. Yeah, I remember that car. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that had the personalized plates on it? I can't recall them. So I bought it with personalized plates, and the guy's like, "Oh, we can swap them for you." I went, "Nah, nah, it's all good. They look cool. They they're black and white, so they suit the car, and they had meaning towards the car." I was like, "Nah, nah, keep them on there." And then I got my first rego bill and found out that those plates were costing me four hundred dollars a year. Yeah, because they was I only had four letters on them. Yeah. And yeah. it was 100 bucks a letter. Yeah. So, well, that's wow. right. Remember, if you, I think it was when I got mine, you paid the 180 bucks 
up front. But if you didn't have the – back then it was three letters, three number combination. Yep. If you had a word like dick or whatever it is, then you had to pay 380 bucks a year mm. every year. Yeah, that's what I had to pay for mine. It was no, 400 that. a year. For no. And I remember when I got the, the car I've got now, the Golf, I picked it up brand spanking new. The person – I had the plates on hold – I think that the dealer had them on hold for me. Yeah. And they'd, they'd gone and picked them up and then put the plates on the car. And she says to me, uh, do you want to consider maybe putting some new plates on? And I'm like, why? And she says, because you've got like a $55,000 car, but your plates are all dinged up. Because I'd had a smash leading up to it and I'd hit a car in front of me yep. and the plates were all dented up and I'd got a sledgehammer to like level the plate out a bit and so the plates were all like chopped and dented and scratched and they're all fucked basically and then i stuck these shitty plates personalized plates my plates that i'd had for 20 years on this brand spanking new car and she's like oh it looks shit i'm like actually no i think it's great something old and with something new and the history with those plates the amount of kilometers i've driven with those plates and all the history i'm not going to give that up no. So I refuse to hand those plates in, even though they're, they're completely rooted. They're so bad. Doesn't matter. No, of course it doesn't. It's nothing. Rocket Russell, first time I've seen you this year. It is the first time we've yep. seen each other this year. Yep, I just realised it just now. Oh, Happy New Year, bro. Happy New Year to you, man, even though it's February. <laughs> Although you wouldn't know, it's like stormy. <laughs> it's so, it's so we were just talking about the complete comparison. So oh, last week yeah. was what? 40, at my house it did 47 degrees. It was degrees. 47 degrees because I had Sassy Sahini here. And we sat in this room and I had the windows closed and the blinds closed and the air conditioner pumping and it was like freezing in here, but outside it was so hot. And now today we've got this massive storm and yeah. it's pissing down rain. They're talking flooding now. Well, it is flooding. I it's mean, flooding, my, yeah. my drive between my place it's and, flooding. and Dad's garage, yeah. uh, there was definitely areas of flooding. It's climate change, man. It's climate change. But you know what you can You're do? You're lucky this table's so long and I can't slap it. <laughs> hey, but you know what you can do with climate change? You can change it to any situation you want. You can, but you can also check out our new merchandise. <sighs> I'm going to roll this bullshit. Roll it, mate. Roll it. Hey, kids. Do you know that we've got our own store? We do. We absolutely do. I've got to roll the thing a bit more. That's right. Hey. Make it louder so everyone can hear it. We've got our own t-shirts, Rocket Russell. I know, I have already got orders in. Shop.inverti.net. Great selection. Yep, you can select all those shirts. I love the Commodore 64 shirts. I believe that will be my next order. But you haven't seen what Jason Relaxation's done with the Gemini. He's actually got an old Outrun. You know, the old Super Outrun. But underneath it, he's got the Gemini. Oh, it's, oh, I'm I haven't telling, paid attention man, to that one. He's, up, he's it's in our platinum selection. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. okay. So we've got our own t-shirt designs. I already we've have got a, some classic I designs. I believe uh, Jason, if he had have showed up today, yeah. was going to bring me a smashed avocado shirt. He was going to bring you something. He had a present for you. Yes, yeah, smashed but avocado. A, but he's a fucking soft cock, and it was too wet and windy for him, so he stayed home. So yeah, we've got our own designs, and and the big one is we've got our own UFO picture. He found that UFO picture from years yes. and years ago, and he's put out put it on the T-shirt. So you go shop.inverti.net. All the T-shirts there are available to pick up right now. They'll ship to your door, and ten percent of the revenue goes to the Melanoma Institute of Australia. So it's charity. Good work, boys. Oh yeah, we and I, there's some good. good yeah. Me and uh, Mrs. Rocket Ross sat down the other night and had a good squeeze of it, and there were some. Fucking classic there's shirts a, on there. There's a couple. Again, I was. You said last week was Sassy Sahin that you'd almost buy every shirt. Pretty much. I, I think I'd be in the same boat. Yeah. It's. I, um, I did send a uh, message via the uh, the contact us section of the Inverti. Did dot, you? Dot shop dot net thing. Yeah. Yes. I did get prompt reply. I have to say. Did you really? I got a very prompt reply. Oh, good. That, at least that's working. Saying <laughs> that <laughs> shit. How did we forget last Starfighter t-shirts? Oh. oh. So you oh. sent him a message, did you? Oh, fuck yes. And he replied back to you and yes, he said... he did. Oh, really? And he knew it was because I, I put oh, down yeah. Rocket yeah, Russ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he um, replied back to you. Yeah, and he said he will uh, in, look into getting some of those for us as well. He has made some cracking shirts. I've got to give... You know I'll shit on him. You know I do. Oh, regularly. I, he's made... I, I'm impressed with what he's done. Oh, that's brilliant. And the shot, some of the his own designs, he's actually designed them himself. Yeah, the smashed avocado ones, brilliant. Yeah. And you know he's got 
cushions, like you can put on your couch. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can actually buy cushions. Are they coming up? I haven't seen them ones yet. Yeah, they're on. Uh, where are they? They're on. Uh, there's another section of the website. You could you have to fiddle around and oh, you'll, okay. you'll see it. I'll keep looking. But there's actually like I think cushions. I got I think I got to a point where it's like okay, if I don't get off this website it's soon, it's going to be bad. It's bad. But I'm not kidding you. He's made an outrun T-shirt with my old Gemini, my 1978 Gemini underneath. I it. did see an outrun shirt, but I didn't pay that much. That's attention. what it is. Have oh, a look at so it. It's, it's actually got my Gemini on it. You know. So I'm not kidding when I say that I would buy nearly everything on there. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Then, um, then he made something that I could not stop laughing. And shout out to Lucky Lisa. I had to show her what he did. He actually put like a, a superimposed Mario faces on our <laughs> on our old man and and our uncle <laughs> when they went to school. <laughs> and it's called, uh, what is it? Family Mario or something or classic Mario. It's on the website. Like he's he's very clever. He no, really is. Yeah. And he did it all himself. Don't, don't the whole tell thing. Him that, bud. No, you'll fuck yeah. yeah you'll fuck. get a big sock. Well, I mean, he's a soft cock because he didn't even turn up today. We're supposed to give you a t-shirt. I know. And I said to him, "Bring that fucking photo because Rocket Russell will love having a look at that photo. He really will. Oh yeah, hell yes. Yeah, and um, he's got it. But it's at, next time we'll show you. Yeah, well, he, yeah. You know, look, I'll let him off because I know my drive, and my drive's nowhere near as dangerous oh, as his bad. drive was horrible. Fuck. I actually, I'll and, I'm, I'm, and he's in a little, little low car. He's I'm in, in a yeah. big four wheel drive. Yeah, there. he's and in he, a there golf. Was, there was a few moments where I was like, "Oh, yeah, will I be washed away here?" I actually will give him a pass because I know up in the mountains it's pretty bad. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm actually. That's why I said to you and to him, if you got to cancel it today, it's fine. You know, I already had to come out and be treated like a piece of shit at Samsung, so I figured I'd come here and you know, I told you, just I, keep the yeah. keep the theory going. But my, I tell you, go back, going back to them, I remember having a big argument with the same guy. I reckon it's the same guy at that Samsung kiosk, and he said to me, "Oh well, the software's Google's; it's not our responsibility." That's what he fucking said. So I said to him, "So what you're telling me is the next phone that I buy has to be a Pixel, a Google Pixel, because you're saying that you can't actually um, look after your own software." Yeah, you know. No. No, oh, sorry. I'm watching as you showing said. pictures that match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was watching your phone do it's, that the it's whole time. On, it's cyber on. It's watching everything we do and listening look, to everything we say. You know, okay. And as I said to him, I went in there in a good mood and was quite. You know, hey, look, I spoke to that lovely lady there on Thursday night. She did this. This is my problem. So he starts from the fucking beginning. You yeah. Know, yeah. Or let me clean this port out. Oh, it's very dirty. Well, then, what did she fucking do? Yeah. Mind you, what about like the hour you've waited there too? Because oh. they ignore you. That's the other thing. I've been there, and if you're not buying something often, they're not really. You know what interested. it is? I'm going to be a prick. I'm going to be a prick. It happens at JB Hi-Fi too. What I'm about to say happens there too. Don't if you're star me on JB Hi-Fi, no, I'm, I'm being up front, right? When you're not young anymore, oh, you they don't, don't look at you. They don't fucking look at you. If you're a young kid, like in your twenties or something. You go up to that Samsung kiosk, they look at you because they go, okay, he's a, they, they, these people know what they want to do with phones. They know all about it. We don't have to waste our time with them. Same with JB Hi-Fi, right? But if you get in your middle age like us, you're fucking dead to them. I'm telling you now because oh. you go to that, that Samsung kiosk, they look at you like, well, you wouldn't use a phone much, would you? Really? That's how they look at you. But yeah. I, I found the best part was when I asked him, so, so is this a relatively common problem with Samsung? And he goes, no, no, I rarely hear about it. I said, wow, how fucking weird is that? There's two people in the same shop with the same fucking problem at the same moment. Yeah. And he sort of went, uh, what? I went, well, if you listen to the conversation, mate, those people there are having the exact same problem I am. And hang on, your website told me the workarounds. Yeah. The Samsung, I got the workaround to get around the problem from your website. Do you know what? I did. I had the same thing. So the workaround, which was total bullshit, where I couldn't send SMSs to some people, but I could to others, right? Which was based on an update that they forced on me, right? Was a workaround. And I said, but you can't have a workaround for this. And then he you know what he said to me, oh, well, just check our forums. Mm. I said, where the fuck is your customer service gone? So I'm going to make a prediction right now, Rocket Russell. Oh, God. You know, this is my Samsung, prediction. next one to go. Yep. They're the next fucking Apple. I'm calling it now. The gr the mighty will fall, right? So Apple, I don't care what anyone says, they're fucking done, right? They're done. They're, they're gone, man. The, I think Apple, so, I don't think they're done. I think Apple will be there for a long time. And, I mean, I'm an ex-Apple 
I know person. you were, yeah. And for someone who was never going to go to Apple, was forced into Apple because of work and shit like that, I think Apple has a segment, and I think they'll keep that segment of the old people because they are a very easy phone to use. You know, they, they're very... You want to make a call, you can make a call. They are... They're crap phones. You can't customise them. You can't do no, anything with no. them. But for ease of use, much better. What I'm trying to say here, though, is you know oh, how they've fuck. got this loyal base and all that sort of... Yeah, yeah. Other than those loyal people, they're fucked. Oh, they're right? not going to pick up new customers. No, they're not, right? And I think Samsung's the same. Not now, not now, but give it more time, people will go, you know what? Why am I paying more for this Samsung... When I could get half for like a, I don't know, a Huawei or something. You know what I mean? You can't have Huawei. Oh, they, you can't they're, without they're it bad. spying on you. They're bad. Yeah. Did and you he, see the report during the week? No. Um. So Mer- Meriton, I don't know if I can say the word on the podcast. Too late, I've already fucking said it. Oh, very sick. Gives a shit um, so too. apparently they offer 5G networks in their buildings and they've been building them into their new apartment blocks and all that. And it's all Huawei stuff. And they're all, now there's a report coming out going, yeah, look, if you use our internal network in a Meriton building, <laughs> yeah, you may yeah. have problems with your data. But in a lot of respects, the basic hardware of a Huawei phone is superior to a Samsung phone. Well, they're the leader in 5G. It's just a problem of the, yeah. you know, their CEO is a communist. Yeah, but what I'm, yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying is the basic nuts and bolts of that phone in a lot of respects, is superior to a Samsung phone. Like, the, the camera's better. Um, maybe the screen's not as clear because Samsung had owned that technology pretty much. Well, they make all the screens, yeah, though, don't they? Yeah, pretty much. No, they make the Apples. Yeah, and that, which is a classic. Apple uses Samsung screens. It's so, uh, back to, who was it? Who were you talking to the other day about iPods? Oh, So, interesting, film. useless trivia about iPods, right? Yep. So, the hard drive that was put out in the first iPod... Um, so the first iPod, the hard drive, in it yeah, was, yeah, a, it yeah, was yeah. a new technology, yeah, yeah, you know, because yeah. you could move it. And it was it a very compact hard drive. It was yeah. a very compact hard drive, very shockproof. Yep. You know who that was? Who was that offered to first? I was going to say Samsung. No. 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 Think think somebody who you years ago would have associated. Oh, Sony. Hmm. Yeah. So, so the guy who produced it, I think it was Philips. It's I think it's a Philips hard drive or the original one. The guy who made it went to Sony first and went, "We've got this hard drive." It's going to be amazing for playing music on the move because yep. it's da, 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 it's shake proof da da da. And Sony went, nah, we think that the days of music on the moves dead. Yeah. We'll pass up on that. Sony, Thank you. you know what? During the nineties and the early two thousands, around that sort, Sony even apart, the seventies. Yeah, apart from like the PlayStation stuff, they lost their way completely. Well, no, they, they didn't really lose did. their way. Their problem was they that, weren't visionaries. No, they were visionaries. No, no. See, I look at it differently. I think they were. They were massive visionaries, but their problem was their stuff was too good. So you look at VHS versus Blu-ray, Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. so, and the same with Blu-ray and HD DVD, which yep. is lucky because Sony Blu-ray took off for Sony. Yep. But, and the other part is that's really quite funny, is the reason VHS took off was because the porn industry. Yeah, the movie pit, yeah. No, no, not the movie. The porn. The porn industry found that it was cheaper to record on a VHS than it was on a beta. So they yeah. could get more out. It was also easier to copy a VHS to a VHS than it was from a beta to a beta. Yeah. The gear was much cheaper. The porn industry adopted VHS, hence we had VHS. But Same you, goes for Blu-ray. Yeah. Blu-ray and HD, porn decided to go with Blu-ray. That is why we have Blu-ray. But you know what else killed beta? The fact that they had limited recording time but initially. Had, that's And the part of that was because Sony wasn't willing to put more money into it because the porn industry had already decided which way yeah, it was going. They also had the philosophy though. I, I got really nerdy with this shit once. They had a philosophy that they really wanted a compact cassette because yes. that would help their beta. Well, cam, you look at mini discs. Do you remember mini discs? Yeah, well, I hey, had a Sony mini disc so, player so and the I. sound was freaking I, amazing. I, I tell you what, Jason Relaxation and I, we both had mini disc plays, but he actually got my mini disc play when he was in Japan. Yep. And I thought that thing was awesome. Oh, it was amazing. It was awesome. The sound quality was awesome. The things you could do on it was awesome. But it never really picked Didn't up. You could up. never really... I it don't was think really hard to find music on it. It was very hard to find music on it. I don't remember seeing, at least in Australia, a recorded I, album on a no, mini disc. I remember, Did you ever see one? Yes, I remember in Brisbane in Chandler's Music. Oh, long remember, since gone. Yeah, long since gone. They had... And I remember the, you know, the cardboard stands they get yeah yeah. it was one of those and it had probably six or seven albums in it i'd never seen a like a 
original recorded no. mini disc. I, that was, I was once. I yeah. saw them. Everything else was, you know, yeah. copies. It's but not I, like um, your LP thing. So you remember the last weather company where we met? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I first started working for them, they a lot of their work was from a big music distributor. Yep. Not 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 the Sony, but Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, so they were the massive music distributor. So when I first went there, I went around their warehouse and it's this big warehouse. It's just like a music fan's dream. It is just CDs as far as the eye could see. And I remember going in there and going, oh, okay, cool. What do you got in LPs? And they had one LP album in the place. And yeah. that was Silverchair's Frog Stomp. Oh, really? On LP. And Crazy. there was three copies of it. And I went, where's the rest of the LPs? And they went, that's it. That's all we've got. I was like, oh, he said, LP's dead. Yeah, dead. yeah, yeah. So when I left there, what, three years ago, um, I went out to this place. I used to go out there regularly. The LP section, amazing. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's tripled more than tripled. No, no, keep going. Yeah, more, more than tripled. It was, it went from what one bay in one aisle to what I'd say eight aisles. Yeah, massive. But so you don't have to be a rocket scientist. I talked about this with Fantastic Phil. When you go to JB Hi Fi, any old JB Hi Fi, there's more LP section than there is CD section now, on average. Well, in- CDs outlasted what it was expected to. Yeah, so they were saying seven years ago. So, as I said, when we did a lot of work for Sony. Uh, seven years ago, they were saying, that's it. CDs will be out in the next three years. But they keep keep holding you on. You know why? Australia actually recently bought the last commercial CD press in the world. Really? Hmm. But uh, I like uh, Fantastic Phil's theory on it. Shout out to him. He reckons that CD might live a little bit longer because it's a cheap alternative and it's durable, and it's it's more portable than LP. Right? Yes. LPs are really expensive. Like, on average, they're what thirty, forty bucks, which is ridiculous for an LP. It? It's insane. Yeah, yeah. especially when when we were kids in seven in the seventies and, and the eighties, LPs were dirt cheap. Can you so um, can you remember your first CD you bought? Yeah, what yeah, was it? Van Halen fifty one fifty. Yeah, it came out in nineteen eighty six. I got I got that. Um, Dad actually bought. Oh, this is an insane story. The old man was massive into hi-fi, yes, audio stuff, and uh, I remember walking the city with him, and he was looking for different amplifiers and different speakers, and he wasn't happy with what he was hearing. And I just like going on the adventure with him, and uh, he ended up buying a system back in 1985 that cost about five grand, which is a lot of money. And then, right? But, and I don't but think, back then that's all what you spent. I, I don't think Mum was impressed, but that's another story. But he had a CD player in 1985. So that was pioneering shit, right? And I remember being like one of the only kids in the neighborhood that had a CD player. And I remember being quiet about it because I didn't really want to tell people I had one. And he, I think um, one of the first CDs I actually went and got was Van Halen 5150. And crazily enough, when I first listened to it, I actually didn't like the album. For whatever reason, which is so dumb because I love it now. I hated um, Eddie Van Halen's constant, you know, screeching on the, on the guitar. It just drove me mad. And now I think it's awesome. And um, I didn't – I was a bit too young and a bit too late on the scene to understand the controversy with Sammy Hagar being the new vocalist and, oh, and Dave, David Lee, Lee Roth, Roth le- leaving, yep. right? But I always think that actually Sammy Hagar brought a lot to Van Halen because he actually introduced a more ri- – like another rhythm section of guitars – that complimented uh, Eddie Van Halen's like grinding on a guitar, and David Lee Roth, I think, is a very overrated vocalist. I really do. I'm, he wasn't bad. He was okay. He was better showman than anything else. Like he did that fancy pantsy jumping on stages, and you had that kind of like he he had a charisma. You know, yes. he was very chas- charismatic. Was David Lee Roth, and Sammy Sammy Hagar wasn't quite as charismatic. He was more traditional. Uh, like head rock down. band, head bound, head down, more, you know, somber. But I really dug that album now. Now I dig it. The first time I heard it, I went, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, being nine or ten years so old. I was in the same boat. So my old man went out he wanted CDs. Yeah. So he went out he bought um 
same thing went out. I remember going into shops. We bought this massive. It was massive Yamaha amplifier. Yes, yeah. And a Pioneer six disc Ooh. CD player with the big magazine. Remember yeah, the old magazine? The, the caddy. Yeah, like a like big a cartridge, cartridge magazine. Thingy. You put, you put yeah. six CDs in there. And oh. do you remember when cars had six CDs? As in the car, that was a big thing. Like if you had a Calais, you, you had, had like the, six CD stacker. That was like a big thing, like, oh. Yeah, but you never used it. No, of course you didn't. Because anything over three discs and the things had shit themselves. Oh, uh, yeah, because if you jet went over a big bump, the, the, the discs would get jammed and all sorts of shit. Actually, I remember one car. can't remember what car it was. Dad bought it home, and it had a six CD player in the car, but it actually was in the boot. Yeah, they had the old... Because uh, the, the original ones, before they went in, in dash six discs, they had the... This thing in the back. In the back, yeah. The CD changer. It was so in the back. stupid. It was there. It was in the back of the car. And actually, it was a big, chunky thing. I, I remember having uh, this is funny, it was an Alpine three disc player. And the three discs went into a little cartridge that you inserted into the into the drive, into the head unit. Yeah. But the problem was when it wanted to change the CD, it had to actually eject the cartridge. Yeah. Move the CD, bring it back in, grab the next CD, bring it out. And that and so it was a it was quite a mechanical thing yeah. to watch. But if you were driving and you were changing gears, you almost decapitated your fucking fingers if you weren't paying attention yeah. to what was going on. Yeah, those big, big chunky uh, stereos that never really fitted in the console. Yep. That was the big. That was a big thing in the nineties. You know, like they had these overly um, was graphic equalizers. <sighs> <laughs> that was the big thing. Twelve channel a graphic equalizer. Whoa, dun dun dun! And everyone was like so blown away by that shit. And now not many people would really bother, I don't think. If you get a brand new car... You I can't. The problem is nowadays you know, that it's all integrated. Yeah, Back in the day, it was a single DIN or a double DIN unit and you could pull it out and put another one in in you know, 10 to 15 minutes and so had a funkier deck. So dumb question, is a, is a company like Stratfield Car Radios dying, dead? <laughs> it's not there's a one industry. not far from down here. No, there's not, it's not. A, I don't think it's the industry it used to be. No. You know, like, because I, uh, I used to work for a furniture shop and next door was a car stereo place and I used to do part-time work for them. That place was crazy, man. It was constantly busy. Yeah. You know, people spending massive amounts of money updating their stereos and putting bigger stereos yeah. in. And, you know, look, uh, I was a, a victim of it. I'm not going to say a victim. A victim. <laughs> <laughs> you were raped. I was raped. <laughs> um, no, nah, well, I had... I had a sh- – because I worked there part-time, they had deals with, you know, stuff. So if you took your car to a car show, you got the stuff at cost price and installation was free. Yeah. So, you know, we used to have these extravagant stereo systems in our cars because you had to go to a show. Yeah. And it sort of – it weighed off against each other, you know. You got a cheap price, great stereo system that you never used to listen to because it was too doof, 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 doof. Yeah, yeah. And all the- but at the shows – that's what people love. That's what they wanted. They wanted they to wanted see the it. The more doof, the better. That's right. So topic of the show, Rocket Russell. Yeah, we'll get there, won't we? We'll get there now. Talk, speaking of cars, do we, want, do we want to do the easy topic or do we want to do the hard topic? Well, I think we'll do the easy one. You want to do the easy one? I think we'll save the hard one. We've got a tough fucking... <laughs> but I'm so tired. I've done so much research. Oh, over I, I know. There's a rabbit hole. And then, then we've changed topics halfway through that because the original topic, neither of us really got much traction with. No, there was a ori- yeah. That original topic was a that's a if, wacky. If shit. I, you got some wacky shit, man. If I could grab something that was decent, I'd run with it. But everything I, I just kept running into brick walls. Do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about it? The wacky shit that you came up with. Oh, the, so our original topic. So we like topic to of the show. Topic of a show. Yep, let's fucking do it. What's the topic, Dan? Time travelers. Oh. <laughs> Fuck! We we weren't planning to do this. This no. could turn this could backfire big time. It could, and this is not. I should have started off with a different song if I was going to do time travelers. But fuck it, why not? Why not? We're in it now. All right, man. Okay, I did some research. Okay, this we, we both did a lot. This of research isn't the on same this. topic that I really wanted to talk about. No, it's not. But we really want to save the other topic. We want to save that for, for a sock puppet for sock puppet Jason relaxation, right? But this one. You came to me with this topic. No, this wasn't me. Oh, this was fuck knuckle. This was fuck knuckle himself. <laughs> Chaser relaxation. Fuck so we're, the one he dumped us in, we're, we're doing one on our own. Yeah. And the one he didn't dump us in, we're going to save for okay. That doesn't seem right. We should, oh, you know, fuck it. Why don't we do the one that we did do? Nah, fuck it. Whatever. 
(laughs) (laughs) They're both wacky. They're both wacky and both of them... Well, the further I look into it, the less I okay, believe. You know and what? I want to believe, man. Yeah. I okay. want to be like my You know what? We could kill two birds with one stone. We could we could kill two birds with one stone. Because time travellers, right? Let's go through this very quickly. Because I'm going to call it out now. Is bu- this is bogus bullshit. This is the wackiest shit I've ever heard of. And it's brilliant like, stories out no, there. It's bullshit. But I, it's I, bullshit. I couldn't. So the, the, here's the topic, right? Time travellers, right? People have claimed that they are from the future <laughs> and they've travelled back into time, right, into our present time or going back into the 80s or whenever it was and they have come and they're, they're saying they're escaping from the future because the future is not good, you know. And the, you know what the theme is? The theme of people that say they've time travelled is, is that the technology of time travelling is available to everyone in the year 2028. Right, that does seem that year does seem to. Okay, pop so twenty twenty eight, they say, is a significant year where people will have the ability to time travel, or apparently the government, the U.S. government, has had that technology for quite a long time, but in the year twenty twenty eight, it's perfected and it's safe to use. That's what all these time travelers claim, quote unquote. And um, so, the, the, what timeline are we living in? Oh uh, well. Man, so this it's is a matrix question. shit, man. Oh, this well, this is pulled back to the this is back to the future, you know, when they is, where Doc sits down is, with Marty explaining the timeline the changes. This is bullshit, man. I should have I should I should have done another song to start this up. But the point is is that they say in 2028 the technology is available and everyone starts to use time travel. Or some people that are time travelers say that agents of time are given the job to go back in time to do some research or historic um, research. Yes, they go back to particular events in time, and they do some research, and then they go back to their present timeline and report on it. Right, that's what I've dug up in my little bit of research on this yep. shit. Right, and so there's a one, there's a couple of people that are really, really well known time travelers. The, I can't remember his name, but there was a guy that came back uh, to I think it was the 1990s. Was that the stock exchange dude? The stock exchange That's dude. That's the best story. So that, that yeah. is my favourite one. That's my favourite too. Because the other guy, he hurt me. He broke my heart. Oh, the Noah. Other guy, Noah. Yeah, what we'll get to ass. Noah in a bit. We'll get Noah, to him. Little ass. prick. So this guy, I can't remember his name. He claims he, came, he he was from the year 2030. He went back to the 1990s. 91, wasn't I it? I think it was 91. Yep. And he played the stock exchange. And he made an absolute fortune because he knew what the results would be because he had like a, a bit like uh, Back to the Future, that movie. The Almanac. He had the Almanac, right? He had all of the historical facts of when the stock market would move in certain directions. And he invested some money that he had into the various shares of companies where he knew that they'd... Basically, his, his pretense was that he wanted a better life for his family. Exactly. That was his pretense. Now... I still struggle with time travelers and I still tr- struggle with time travel. Um, I'm not smart enough to understand what their physics were on all of that and the science behind it, but he was saying that's what he did. But whether he's full of shit or not, the guy made a fucking ton of money. He got like, made a ton of money, yeah. got caught by the FBI. Because, and the, you know why he got caught by the FBI? Because, because he was making too much money. Exactly. He was and make, they thought it was inside trading. Exactly. They thought this guy was an inside trader because he knew everything. He, he could play the market so well that he knew when thing was, things were going to happen and how much they would happen and why they would happen. He was playing and manipulating the market so well and he made lots of money. Lots of money. Then he got caught by the FBI. Yep. He got put into jail. Exactly. Got thrown into jail and then he got questioned. And the entire questioning was, I'm from the future. I'm from the fucking future. I'm from the year 2030. I think it was 2030. Yes. Or maybe 2040. There's two, actually Noah's from 2040. I think he was. Noah was further than that, wasn't he? Oh, maybe. Yeah, you're pulling out your iPad. We're going to need help with this. But he said he was from the 2030s, I think, this guy, the stock market guy. And uh, he starts getting interviewed. He gets absolutely harassed by the FBI and everybody else, all government agencies, saying, well, how did you know that the market would do this and do that? And he basically said, well, I'm from the future and uh, this is what happens in the future. He actually gives out some significant events that will happen in the year, you know, in the 2030s. But the big one that he drops is, is that in 2028, 
everybody will know about time travel. And that he says that even in the 2010s and the early 2020s, that technology is freely being used, but it's not available or known to the general pub- public until 2028. Andrew Carlson's. That's the guy. Name. Yeah. $350 million he made on the stock exchange. Oh, wow. That's where they pulled him in. <laughs> you make that kind of yeah. money. Yeah. And what year did he claim he was from? He claimed he was from 2056. Okay. Right. I can never remember what years these guys are from. 2056, he says. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this all happened on March 29, 2003. Right. Early 2000s. I thought it was earlier than that. No, I thought it was the either the late 90s or the 2000s because these guys, right, most of them go back to the 80s, the 90s or the early 2000s for some reason, right? There's other examples where, and look, I'm going to discount straight away. I know you're going to agree. You might disagree with me because you sent me a picture. I know oh, I that picture. Piss on that straight away. So you're away. talking about the bridge picture? Yep, the bridge picture. My problem with the bridge picture, so it has gone back to Kodak. It has been examined and they've come back saying it hasn't been tampered with. The part that gets me is apparently that photo doesn't contain just the time travel or the, or the, the let's say the gentleman dressed inappropriately for the time period that he is in. So what we're talking about is there's a guy that's... It's the opening of the bridge. The opening of what bridge? Hang London on. Bridge? No. No, no. There's a bridge. So a guy goes, a guy is misplaced in a photo. He's clearly, he looks like a hippie wearing sunglasses in a crowd of people that are dressed in a period of like, I think it's the 40s or 50s. Yes. And he's standing there amongst a crowd of onlookers on a construction of a bridge that's about to open and he's got a smirk on his face, right? And to me, when I looked at that photo, I've gone, that's superimposed, that's bullshit. But as you say... Kodak got a hold of it, and Kodak says it's legit. So it's a photograph from 1941 of genuine authenticity of the reopening of the South Fork Bridge in Gold Bridge, British Columbia. Uh, yep, so it was 1941. But so according to this, there's not only one... To- oh, according to some stories, there's not only one time traveller in that picture. There's, oh, there's more than one. There's more than one time. That's why I sent it to you because it's quite oh, interesting. I only saw the one guy because yes. it's obvious. It's right at the front. Yeah, but there's another guy hiding in the background. Um, don't click on the word hipster because that takes you to some really yeah. stuff on the wiki. There's a, yeah, he looks like a hipster. He really does. He's got yeah. like a jacket. He's got like he's sunglasses. Got a hoodie. He's got like a hoodie thing. He's yeah. got sunglasses, which in the 40s weren't sort no, of a thing. They look like 100%. Modern sunglasses that you'd see today. But there's a guy standing two people down from him in front of the little girl who's also meant to be the time, another time traveller. So apparently there was something historic about that moment in time that we had two time travels there. Right. I See, I when I saw that photo, this is why I struggle with time travel. I looked at that and went, that looks so fake, it's unbelievable. But then, as you say, that Kodak got a hold of it and they say it's legit. They say it wasn't superimposed. There's been no funny tampering with it. Um, and Kodak have signed off on it, haven't they? Yes. That's legit. Yeah, that's 100%. what it says. Genuinely authenticated. Yeah. So, And it's a photo from 1941. So that's odd. That's probably, that's probably the most compelling thing in those weeks of research we did. Yeah. That I could find everything Dude, else. I like went down Noah, the rabbit hole. Noah, Noah I, I had great faith in Noah. Okay, I, had, I had big hopes that okay. Noah was going to be real. Okay, let's talk about... Okay, so before we get to Noah, because Noah's the most famous... Would you say Noah's the most famous time traveller? I'd probably say at the moment, yeah. Okay, at the moment, okay. Yep. But before we go off on Noah, let's go back to the stock market guy. Oh, yep, stock market guy, yep. What was his name? Um, Andrew Carl... Cullen? Carlin? Was it? So stock Carlson. Carlson. So stock market guy, what became of him? He just did he disappeared, didn't he? He um got bailed out for an it was an astronomical amount of money that they think didn't think he had nothing. Yeah. Had no family, no money. Yep. Uh, no sh- background. No anyone. background. There yep. was nothing they could find on him previous to was it, I think it was two or three months before he started trading on the share market. There is absolutely no record, no, of, no record him. of him. No record of him, no. His fingerprints didn't come up. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This guy just appeared out of nowhere. No social security number. That's right. Which is a big thing for Yanks. Yep. I don't understand it. Well, my understanding is when they finally dragged him in and they said, listen, how do you have all this money and how is it that you're manipulating 
the market or you're able to read the market so well, have you got inside trading? They did a background check as they would on yes. him. And he basically, in their own words, didn't exist. Didn't exist. No. Did not exist. No, and no then, date of birth, no records of birth, no records of having a father or a mother, no records of any kind of siblings, nothing. No, Nada, dick. Absolutely right? nothing. And yeah. then he, the bail was meant to be astronomical and a stranger paid his bail and he was never seen again. Oh, that's right. A guy came along. Yep. Yeah, that was the other guy. Because, you know, they reckon that was another time traveller yeah. that came and got him saved and him, freed him, him and saved him, yeah. Yep. And gave them the money that they wanted and he disappeared and he's never been seen since. Never been seen since. Never been heard of it. Yeah, all right. So he's the most interesting guy. Then there's the photo that we were just talking about of the... Now you've the just bridge. said the, the bridge with yep. two time travellers are in it and Kodak have signed off on it. The big one, Noah. Right, no, but no one broke my heart. Oh, dude, right. I, but I had so I, much faith. I kind of saw through Noah anyway. i got to be honest with you. Well, the YouTube you know? channel he was on is kind of famous for that kind of yeah. stuff really now, isn't it? Yeah. Well, okay, so let's go back so people that don't know who Noah is, we can kind of fill in the pieces as best we can. Noah was a very upfront and famous time traveller. And he claimed... What year did he claim he came from? I thought it was 2030s. I don't no, know why... It was further than that. Was it? Yeah. I've got... I don't know why I've got the 2030s in my head. There was another time traveller that was in the 2030s. But this guy was very upfront. And he was not blurred out in any way. He was sitting in front of a, a, a webcam and he was doing YouTube videos and oh, he got huge. He got massive. But I got to admit, I always felt that Noah was. No, fake. he was twenty thirty. There you yeah, go. I was. He was twenty thirty, wasn't he? Yep. Yeah. And he passed like polygraph tests. Yeah, he yeah. passed everything. So he he started coming out and saying, "I'm from the future. I'm from twenty thirty. I came back into a time machine to modern our modern day, which is like you know two thousand and eighteen, nineteen, roughly that sort of period. Yep. And I don't know what was his reason for coming back. Just to study. Uh, Does he yeah. say? Oh, no, he come back to the wrong year. He f oh, he made a mistake. Made a mistake and he got stranded here. He st oh, yeah, that was his other bullshit thing. He was stranded. Yes. But what was his reasoning? Does it say why he tried to come back in time? I'm just quickly skim reading. I can't remember off the top of my head. No. No. So I struggle with Noah. I struggled with him straight away, even when you were telling me all about him, but you hadn't given me the punchline yet, which I'm about to give everybody. So Noah was on YouTube telling everybody that he was stranded in time, that he was a time traveller, that time travel was a thing that everyone would know about in the year 2028, and that it would be safe to do time travel for most people. Yeah, but they were doing, he was talking about people doing it as a holiday thing. Yeah, people were doing it for like studying and historical reasons and yeah, going on holidays and... He was saying it was like a recreational thing. But leading up to 2028, that apparently the technology was around like the year 2005, but it was extremely dangerous, but was perfected in the mid-2010s, like 2015, but would not be unveiled by the government until 2028. That's what he kept saying, yep. right? And he was being pretty convincing. He was a bit of a pretty convincing character, saying that in the year 2030, things are tough. Um, he was talking about some significant... I think he gave off some... There was a war or something. There was a war. Yep. He's going on about some events that were um, that would happen, that were quite significant, that the world would be a bit more of a difficult place than it is in the like 2017, ding, 2018 ding, sort of times. That's right. And um, he, he sounded very convincing. And he looked you dead in the... Like, straight down the lens, didn't he? He was like, down the lens... And he submitted himself for polygraph tests. Yep. And he passed. Multiple. 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 Oh, yeah. From multiple people. Was he ever uh, given the treatment by the FBI? Do you know that? I don't know that. I think it was mainly just... I think the FBI doesn't really care about those things. I uh, think they think they're shit. Yeah. And I tend to agree. I but tend it, to. But it, was he, is he Australian, Noah? Was no. He, no. No, he was a Yank. He was American. Yeah, he was a Yank. Um, and oh, that's the other thing. You remember he had that X-ray... The oh, that's the oh, that's a great one. Thank you. So the consistent thing amongst all these time travelers is not just Noah that they all say straight away, "I have a chip embedded in my wrist," and we all do it now. We all do it because they can they can identify us, and so every one of them have their X rays taken of their wrist, and they've all got a microchip implanted. Every yeah. one of them, 
So that was like the dun 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 <laughs> moment where everyone's like, holy fucking shit. Like there is no way you can get something and shove it in your wrist easily, right? But the way apparently it was all done was there was very little surgical scars on the wrist. It was very convincing. Yes. And so Noah... And the, the, the x-ray actually showed up. Yes. For Noah. They could have yes. the x-ray done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so there was something in there. Yeah, so Noah said, look, I've got this same microchip as all these other time travellers are claiming because they asked him, are you aware of other time travellers? And he goes, yeah, yeah. It's Like I said, it's common. People can travel as much as they want. I know about these other people. Um and I've got the same microchip they do. And I'm happy to have an x-ray. And he had the x-ray and there was the microchip. And everyone went, holy shit. And he was so convincing, people believed him, right? Because yeah. he passed every single test. He was probably the, the great white light. The, the greatest, time. greatest, well, bullshit artist of modern modern history, I think. I think. I still... I'll get a laugh out of a few people. Second greatest. Lance Armstrong. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's a good one. Yeah, well, see, at the point of him revealing that he was fake, he was so convincing. Yeah. Right. I'll get to the punchline. Noah actually gets on YouTube and tells everybody that he couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't deal with the the lies and the interrogation that he was getting and all the third degrees and second degrees that he was getting. So he actually come, he comes clean, doesn't he, on his YouTube channel? Yep. And he tells everybody, I'm a fake. I lied. There's no such thing as time travel. I basically can't go on like this anymore. And I, I've got a regular family. And I just do this to get views on YouTube. Yep. Wah, wah, wah. And all the time traveler fanatics that believe in this shit, they fucking went to pieces on this. <sighs> He was he was the great light man because everyone believed that. Well, the guy. other one was was his um he's here. I've got a picture of him at the moment. Is uh the Alexandra Smith guy? Do you remember him? No, I don't. You'll remember his head because he's got one of the weirdest looking heads. Oh yeah, I do. I yeah. do. Oh yes, yes. He yes. was from the year six thousand. Uh okay. Tell me about him. Uh, well, he was. I looked into him. He didn't ever make me want to look into him further. It was like you're full of shit. Yeah, he had this picture of the year 6000, which is... Those cities. The on The city yeah. on the thing. Yeah, you can see that picture yep. there, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, he never really grabbed me as being a real one. No, because that could be just anything. Well, you know, look, you put somebody in a bad suit, you know, you can claim that you're a time traveller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, they're always in bad suits. They always pull out photos of modern cities. Like, I think he put out a city of, I don't know, I'll pull it out of my ass, Detroit. Yep. And it looks futuristic and everyone's like, oh, you know, like, you, know, y- you don't believe it at all. And um, there was the other guy, see, they don't, do, they don't help themselves. They always get caught. There was the other guy in Sweden who said he was fixing his leaking tap under his sink and went under and, and his sink was a, to- was a time vortex. Did you hear about this shit? Have you heard about this wa- so, yeah. wackiest of wacky shit? This guy in Sweden was, leak- was fixing a leaking tap under his sink but his sink had a time vortex and he got and he fell into it and he came out the other side to the year 20 I don't know 60 something and he was a, he's a 20 year old guy now and he and he met his 70 year old self or something like that and he took he takes a picture of him of, of this of him and oh, himself oh yes okay right? yes i remember that one and it's a picture and it, and the, and he's showing his arm with the same tattoo and the guy showing in the arm with the with the same tattoo and they got the same bald head. But you know what it found out? Yeah, he got caught out. It was his fucking dad. Yeah, no. It was I, his old man. I remember that one. Yeah, yes. so that was fake as shit, you know? Uh, look, there's many. Noah was probably the one of the... Ones. Noah was the big one. He was the big one. Yeah. I, he actually seemed quite credible. Yeah. Until he didn't seem credible. Noah went on for how long? He went months. on for months. Months, didn't he? Yeah. He went on for a while. He yeah. was one of the bigger ones. Yeah. Like little weird head dude. He didn't last long no. until he disappeared. No. And I don't know much of um, I don't know many other people that are claiming to be time travelers now because I think a lot of them got caught out as being fake. Uh, there's one at the moment who's just popped up in the last few weeks, but again, what's he saying? It's same crap. He's from the year six thousand or something, yeah. and you know he's come back to visit 
and see what the world was like because they don't have much documentation after the big war. Yeah, big war, yeah. That, well, that's a common theme. It's a common theme. But, yeah. I mean, that's like reading Nostradamus's yeah. predictions. Yeah. I mean, if you read it with your head slightly cocked to the left, you'll get a different story to what if you read it head slightly cocked to the right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can read anything into these predictions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, didn't, I just didn't buy this shit at all. You were telling me about time travel and... Jason Relaxation's telling me about time travel and actually let's fucking ring him. Oh, like, I'm you got a Bluetooth up? Yeah, 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 I do. I'm going to see if I can get him because uh, he was the one that was telling me about time travel. Apex TV, that's the Apex tank. TV. Is, that's that yeah, YouTube channel. That's the YouTube channel, yeah. If you see it on Apex TV, there's a good chance it's uh, not true. Ah. Australia's most affordable Sorry, let's see if we can get him. Oh, yeah, because you'll be on my Bluetooth now. He'll laugh. He might not even answer his phone. No, but he was the guy that was talking about time travel as well and the wackiness of it. Well, he's the one who started it. He was the one that started it. I mean, I must admit, I like the idea. I mean, it's it's so wacky. It just it doesn't hold water at any, you know. Oh, it, it's one of those things, like you look at all those, and I, I believe, not believe, how would you put it? You look at these movies like Back to the Future, you change one thing. Yeah. You know, okay, so they're saying that, you know, people go back on time travel holidays. What happens if they change one thing? Yeah. You know, one thing. And why are they always going backwards? Why can't they go forwards in time? Like, so in the year 2028, this, I, if Noah was sitting there right now, I'd say to him, okay, man, you're saying you came back in time. Can you go forwards? So you're from the year 2030. Can you go forwards in time? Can you go to 2060? Tell me what that shit's like. Yeah. Right? Oh, no, it doesn't work like that. You only go backwards. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, this guy here, he's claims to be from the year 2075. Yeah. So that sort of puts climate change out the window, doesn't it? No, probably not. I mean, because you could see the impact of what 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 climate change might be. I know you're taking the piss of me. I know. I know. It's up up there with your 8K TV. You (laughs) fuck. I might get an 8K TV just to piss you off, you fuck. <laughs> no, don't, forget, don't forget the new, new HDMI cable. Mate. Oh, well, I'll tell you, that's what I think happened. I think it just blacked out, the bloody thing. But that's another fucking story. But time travel, man, i I, I got to say, in our new segment with you, truth or bullshit, I call bullshit. I call bullshit, I call bullshit on time travel. Anyone that says they're a time traveller, Anyone who says I just don't. that their government promotes time travel? I don't believe it. I don't. You can't. I don't even think we've got the technology, even in the year 2028, to, to pull it off. I just don't think. I don't know anything about how you would time travel in theory, let alone in practice. Well, hang on. Wasn't that when um, Superman did it? Didn't he just have to fly next to the sun really? Oh, they no, did that, was that in Star, Star Trek. Trek. That was Star, Star Trek. Trek had to do the laps of the sun really that tight. That was Star didn't Trek they? 4. When they had to go back to 1986 to get a whale. Yes, where they had to build, they gave yeah. us the uh, secret. And for Scotty Postmates. goes, Debbie Wheels, Captain. <laughs> I guess. Sorry, now that you've said that, yeah. have you seen any of the Picard? I've heard a lot about it. I've heard, I can't see it because it's on uh, Amazon and I don't have an account and I'm not paying for it. But I had a really big discussion with Sassy Sahini when she was here last time. And um, I'm. Gutted. Have you seen it? You'll be the only one that likes it. You'll be the only one. I, you will be the only one because everyone hates it. Do they? Yeah. I actually didn't mind it. I've only watched the first episode. What, how are you watching it? Oh, okay. You can tell me how you're doing it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, because the big problem is, okay, so you know the background behind it? Yeah, yes. So you know that Patrick Stewart's writing – a whole bucket of it, most of it, and you know that he's basically writing his own political opinions into the actual episodes. Do you know that? Yeah, you can see it, but I just enjoyed it because he was still one of my favourite captains. Uh, this is what hurts me because I love Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart, in my, you know how I, I thought Patrick Stewart was as cool as fuck when he got at, was it the Canadian Grand Prix and they had the, uh, was it not last year, the year before, and on the podium, Patrick Stewart gets on the st- the step of the podium, and he's and he's got the champagne and with the drivers, at, at the Formula One and the, the Canadian Grand Prix, I think in two thousand and nineteen or two thousand and eighteen, I should say. And I'm thinking, 
He he can't get any cooler. And he's just he's just insanely cool. I don't know. There's right? that picture of him on the internet where he's knitting a um, Christmas jumper sitting in his Christmas onesie. Oh, no, that was fucking I haven't up. seen that. Oh, that's brilliant. I haven't seen that. Man, I, I can't comment on it because I haven't seen it. I'm only going off what I've heard. And I I've been listening to the rapidly like crazy nerdist nerds out there in regards to Star Trek and how much they love Star Trek and now I'm hearing how much they hate what he's doing to uh, the new Star Trek format. Um, I, I don't know. Only, I, I'm only going off what I've heard. There might be a bit, few more episodes in where that really starts. To How many have you watched? One. I've watched the first okay, one so and I've really enjoyed it. I think they've released four or five now. I think so, yeah. I think they've, they've done that at the time of this recording. And I heard that the first one's okay. The first one's brilliant. I've heard that really the first one's it. okay, right? Apart from the scene, where, which I have seen, where those... Uh, Black leather bike riders are fighting. That they everyone says it looks really cheap. Yeah, it looks bad. It looks pretty bad. Um, but two, three, and four, I think everyone's bitching badly oh, okay. about how he has to worm his own political opinions into like Brexit's in it. Oh, right. How's Brexit in? Because it? the Federation doesn't want to help the fucking Romulans. Right, or something like this, or they are helping the Romulans, or some... Bo- I don't know, right? Oh, okay. But apparently the Federation now is evil. The Federation a, is a problem, in his eyes, right? Uh, so he's I a, might a, download a couple I never knew that Patrick Stewart, to be perfectly honest, was a political animal, as much as he is, but he's very political. The majority of Yanks are. No, he's, he's British. Oh, British, yeah. He's, I say he's a pom, isn't he's he? He's a pom. So he's pissed off with Brexit, and he's put it in Star Trek. I've, I've watched a lot of shit on this because I really want to watch it, but because I don't have Amazon and I'm not paying for it, right, I, I'm i watching what the nerds are saying about it and some of them are like to rant for rant's sake. But if everybody's got the same complaint, then where there's smoke, there's fire. And I just think that, you know, I'm disappointed with what I'm hearing about what he's done to it, you oh. know. He's pissed. He's pissed on it. Is what I okay. Thought, well, the I first thought. episode wasn't shabby shabby. I heard the first episode's okay, but I'd be very. It was inter- good to see him back in the suit and that kind of. Oh stuff. yeah, man. Of course and it Riker. is. Yeah, all the cameos. Of course you'd be excited. I would be too because I love Next Generation. <sighs> Star Trek Next. I talk about fucking time travel. Star Trek. Star Trek: The Next Generation had some awesome time travel, especially when they had like uh, what were they like time loops and, you know. What was the first security officer's name? Tasha Yar. Oh, God, I had the biggest cross. So did I. Oh. What was her name? Denise. Denise Crosby? Don't know. She never did anything really. Uh, no, that, did she, she did. And she was in a movie or two. And I, I actually, I must admit, I don't know the reason why she left the show. I don't know. I must, I must look that up. But yeah, I love Tasha Yar. And I used to love, I love that episode where Data and Tasha and Tasha Yar get it on. And he Good says, of course, data. I'm fully functional in sexual functions or whatever he says, you know? <laughs> Good old data. But no, Next Generation, I mean, the first two episodes were pretty average at best. I'm being kind. And then from three to seven, they were awesome. What an awesome show. Yeah. Oh, it's just so good. Yes. You know? I'm with you. Oh, fuck yeah. And I, did you like Voyager? I didn't like Voyager. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't mind Voyager. Didn't get into it. I tried it and I tried, what was that other one? DS9. DS9. I struggled with DS9. Struggled with DS9. Yeah. And then at the start the, I did at least. What was the other one that had Whoopi in it? That was uh, Next Gen. No, no. No, what not Whoopi. What's, it was on the uh, land. Deep Space Nine. Oh, uh, yeah, Deep Space Nine. Yes, but that was a space station. Yeah, DS9. I didn't like that one. I, uh, you know what? At the start of it again, it didn't have, it just had individual stories. But then towards the end, they had the Dominion War. And okay. when the Dominion came into it, it actually was pretty good. Oh. They had more of a continuing theme throughout this, the show as opposed to individual stories. episode stories. And I actually really enjoyed that. But you see, I can't fucking stand Star Trek Discovery. I can't fucking stand it. I won't watch it. And I hate I hated Enterprise. You mean Enterprise, don't you? Do you mean the No, because no, I didn't I watched like the first 20 minutes of Enterprise. Hated and went, it. And went, yeah, I'm not going to watch it. Oh, really. my God. What an awful fucking show. And that was the beginning of the end of Star Trek, to me. 
you know. But it's all those different timelines, isn't it? You know, uh, who yeah. owns this timeline? Yeah, and who yeah, owns yeah, that yeah. timeline? It's all. Le- it's very legalese. Yeah. It's very legal bound. You can't do this. You can't you do this. You, you can't own do this that. timeline. And no, no. And it's just the whole point, you know. But the timelines. But I always loved the time travel in Star Trek. Did you ever watch the episode Enterprise? Uh, yesterday's Enterprise, which was the one where um, the the Enterprise D hits a like a space time continuum bullshit thing, and they go back to a parallel universe where they're actually at war with the Klingons. They actually never made peace with the Klingons because the Enterprise C, the predecessor to the D, yep. failed to reach, uh, I think it's the Kittima space station or one of the space stations to save a whole bunch of Klingons from Romulans. <laughs> so the Romulans attacked the Klingons, right, in, in the main timeline and the Enterprise C came to their defence but ultimately got destroyed. But because the Klingons remembered that the... Federation tried to save them against the Romulans, they actually made a peace treaty. But in this alternative timeline, that never happened. So the Enterprise C failed to reach this space station and so these Romulans killed all these Klingons. And so what happened was, and it is, a best fu- it is the best, I don't remember one of one. the greatest Star Trek Next Generation episodes ever where the timeline changes and Worf is gone. Worf is not there because he, he's part of the Klingon Empire. So he's not there. So the whole episode, episode Worf disappears. Tasha Yar is still alive. And the Enterprise D is called the Battlestar the battle ship. It's called a battleship. It's not a starship because it's now like a, a starship used for wartime. I don't right? remember that one. I have to yeah. go, have to go, have to go oh, watch that fuck. One. It's on Netflix. Oh, oh it's awesome, right? And so they uh, there's heaps of battles in it. But what they learn is Tasha Yar, who reprises her role in this is season three, so she's been dead a long time. Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg sits down with her and, and she starts feeling a bit weird. And Whoopi Goldberg says, You're not supposed to be here. And Tasha Yar says, What do you mean? She says, You're supposed to be dead, Tasha. So for some reason, Whoopi Goldberg's uh, species can pick up different Yeah, but timelines. she was always. She had a weird. Psychic, yeah. She had a psychic thing. She was a bit of a. She had a weird relationship with Captain Picard. You never really knew what the deal was, and so she goes to Captain Picard right at the end of the episode when they realize that the Enterprise C has to go back through this wormhole or this space time continuum <laughs> thing. It has to go back to that particular point of of, of its battle to uh, re-engage with the Romulans. Yeah. Right. And Tasha Yar volunteers to go back, right? And Picard goes, why? What would you say? You know, it's a suicide mission. There's, it's, it's no, there's no coming back. And she says, well, I know in this timeline I'm supposed to be dead. I'm not supposed to be here. Oh, it's I remember that fucking bit. awesome. I, that now that yeah. rings a bell, I have to go home and watch that. Oh, one. Yesterday's Enterprise is one of the best Star Trek Next Generation episodes ever. Speaking of time travel <laughs> and timelines. Time travel. Oh, time travel. Fuck it. It was. I, I went into time travel with so much hope. Yeah, you didn't. You sh- we shit it on. We shit it on. And the same as. I mean, we're not going to say what we're currently looking into, but I've spent you, years thinking that was true, only to be. We can. We can kill two birds. Nah. We've only done one hour. Oh, have we? Yeah, we can. We can wrap the other one up pretty quick. Although they can. Let's save it. Yeah, I reckon Let's we save, save it for Jason because I, I, I'm actually quite keen to hear his yeah, side I am of too. it. I am too. Yeah, I am too. Yes. All right. So what are we going to do? I'm done. I'm fucking done. You're done? Yeah. Make a short episode, short and sweet. No one listens to us anyway. Who gives a shit? I do. Oh, you're, you and Super Simon. Oh. You're the only two. That's all. That's it. That's it. One hour four. Beautiful. Wow. I know. Could be the quickest one we've ever done. That's what you said. <laughs> Have you got anything else to say about time travel? I, I went in with great hopes, although I'm, I'm worried that, you know, like it, people think it's easier than it would be. I just, I, I just think every interaction... I just don't believe that... Co- I, you know what the biggest mystery to me is? Why Kodak, Kodak signed off on that bloody picture? Because that picture looks fake as shit. It looks fake as fuck. I don't think it does. I, I think actually it think does. it looks quite good. I think it looks clever. Like... A Photoshop picture, you know, like that kind of yeah. thing.
But yeah, it looks like that, that dude on um, Facebook and Reddit. Yeah, and all that, exactly. You know, yes, it you know, does. Please, please, please. I, I had this picture taken with my ex. Please get rid of my ex out of the yeah, photo. Yeah, it looks like that, right? It just doesn't look right. And yet Kodak signs off on it. And and I think that okay. there was not only Kodak, there was a few other companies that came in and went, yeah, no, this is actually yeah. legit. So, you know, all the time travel stuff, the whole thing is only a couple of things that actually hold water or interest me. are interesting. Yes. The first one is the guy that won all that money on the stock market. Andrew. Andrew. And he actually got detained and questioned by the FBI and all sorts. And, and then stuck to his story. Stuck to his story. Had the microchip in his wrist, like just like all they, they all say. And he pissed off. He did, they actually... Literally disappeared. He literally disappeared, right? He, it was ne- he, he, did he disappear from his cell? No, no. He, no, they paid him out, didn't they? He paid bail. He got bail yeah, paid, was meant to right. appear in court the next week. But there was week. one that disappeared in a cell. Was oh, it? yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was one. There was a time traveler. So going back to Andrew, that was his name, wasn't it? Yes. He got, he got paid bail. And he disappeared. He was never seen again, right? Yep. Even though I'm sure the FBI were keeping close tabs on him. There was another supposed time traveller. I can't remember his name. Who got caught. By, they always get caught by the cops. I don't know why, but they're, they're just hopeless. They do. And he was saying he was a time traveller. I've got the microchip on my wrist. And he's, uh, do the x-ray. And the x-ray came back. Yeah, you got a microchip in your wrist. He was from the year like 2040 or 2050. He was saying there's a great like hardship in the world, the world's really tough and he was alluding to there being a war and he was being detained and they put him in the cell for for later yep. and they're going to question him later. I think he was having dinner or something and he fucking disappeared, vanished in a ball of light. Caught on camera. Caught on camera and Kodak signed off on it too. So I don't know if Kodak are from the time travellers because I don't believe it either. No, but, so he disappeared. They're, they're just one of those companies that didn't didn't move with technology yeah. and now are pretty much That's gone. They're gone. So there's the time traveller that was in the photo. Kodak signed off on it. There's the uh, multi-millionaire that made all the money. There's uh, Noah who basically said he was lying. He said he was lying, but then he also 100% had that microchip in his wrist. Yes, that was the x-rays I actually saw. So I don't know why he – you know what? There's another theory with Noah. I don't know if you know this one. Noah said that he was lying because he was told to. Oh, because he got in trouble. Yeah. That basically, there's a there's a theory. I did some more Googling and researching and whatnotting on it. And he was told to fess up that you're lying so that we can make it all go away. You can just be left alone if you just tell everybody you're, you're basically full of shit, right? But the fact remains that he 100% passed every polygraph test about yeah. anything that he was asked. That's why he was such a... He was, he so was, a, he was a shining light, He was he? a shining light, and it, and he did 100% have that microchip in his hand. 100%. Yeah, no, and it wasn't like something just in the surface of your skin. It was in deep. Yeah, no, it's, it's an oval, like a pill top, Like a pill. Pill yeah. thing, and it's in that little bit there. You know, it's well, like, And I'm pointing to here, yeah, right like, here. Like your so, thumb. So when you people listening to this at home, where I'm pointing to is right there. Yeah. yeah just next to there, but not as far as there. And then that other place... <laughs> That special place. I'm not allowed to touch people in the special place. That's bad. That's bad. No, so at the end of the day, yeah, he was he was compelling, but there's a theory that he was told, you need to stop saying this shit and you need to come clean. And he basically said, oh, you know, oh, okay, cool. And, he's, and he fessed up and he's disappeared now, literally. Yep. I don't know where he is. No one knows where he is. Um. So, but but you know what? The only thing, I don't know if they pick up on each other with what they say. Like it started with one person and somebody they else picked do, up on it. They must because there's certain years that keep getting mentioned as key years. That's what I mean. Which means they must. Yeah, so like 2028. 2028. That pops up yeah. over and over yes. quite regularly. Exactly. So it's not like they go, oh, well, uh, I said 2030 it's available and this guy says 2036 and this other guy says 2040. They're all saying 2028. They all say at some point, I can't remember what year it is, but somewhere in the 2040s or thereabouts is a great war or there's some real big issue that changes the way the world works. Um, and they've all gone, gone back to what they say is the good old days, which is now, Fuck modern they, day. They missed it by 20 years. I man. think they missed it by fucking 30, 30 years. Sorry about saying. Yeah, the 80s. 80s. They should have gone yeah. back to the fucking 80s like Marty McFly did. But Go Marty. The, 
but the point is, is that they, that's the only thing that I find a bit weird is the fact that that I, one year they, it's almost up. like collusion. But I don't know how they can collude because they actually they claim they don't know each other because they were asked, right? Do you know this guy? And they go, oh, I've never seen that guy before. They they could be lying about that, but yeah. But some of them see what what doesn't help their cause is they do silly shit like the guy underneath the sink and the guy and he goes 40 years into the future and he meets his future self, which is actually his father, and it gets all... And which is something that's actually, um, I remember Noah mentioning, was that he had to try and avoid running into his own self because that actually causes a massive paradox. That's right, yeah. He had to avoid himself, yeah. That's right. Yeah, but then you've got other time travellers who, well, suppose the time sink travellers, let's call them sink travellers. Some of them are real bullshit. Like, some of them are taking the piss. Yeah. Oh, And that's the other thing I wanted to raise with you. I started going down the rabbit hole of watching all those videos of people blinking. Have you seen that? Where they uh, go faster than the speed of light and they blink, they disappear on camera. So they, they're walking along the street and they just disappear in a oh, flash of light. those ones, yes. That's just bullshit. Oh, I call that out now. It's just total shit. The, the, they're funny ones. I like them ones. They're funny, of them but they're... Oh, the one with the cars, where cars just disappear. Have you seen that? Where they're driving on the road and then they just disappear and then they There was repeat. one that I saw where, and it was brilliant. It, was, it had the flash of lights. So yeah. It was definitely directed by J.J. Abrams. Yeah, it looked like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the car moved and there was a little figure you could see sort of come across and picked up. It was like a little toot-toot thing. Yeah. And moved it out of the way of a truck. And yeah. Some of them were quiet. It's funny, but at the same time, at the end of the day, I just don't believe any of it. I mean, I kind of want to believe. I think it'd be cool. But the only guy that I kind of felt was telling the truth was Noah, and then he said that he was lying, and it all kind of unraveled. He's just scorned everybody he, else now. He, They've all been painted with the same brush. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And then you got silly guys like the guy underneath the sink, the blinking cars. Um, yeah, yeah. I, DeLong. Oh, <laughs> I Tom DeLong. He's, Should we do a quick update on Tom? Have you heard anything about Tom? No, DeLong? I haven't. I haven't. No. So, well, I think since last time we've spoken, um, or last time we did the podcast, Tom DeLong has now actually signed an agreement with the American government, with the American Air Force, to investigate metal bits of metal oh, yeah. that have been acquired somehow and are now being tested. Ah. So what does that mean? Uh, that means that they something found something in the desert and now they've conned the Air Force into giving them money to go and research it. I just don't I just don't understand that whole Tom DeLong to the stars thing. I just don't I just don't I don't see how that's po- how it works. Didn't he ask for 50 million bucks or was he bro- out of pocket? He was out of money. They were they were broke. They were broke, weren't they? They were I don't, I don't understand. They were like twenty million bucks in debt, something like that. Yeah. But now they've managed to sign this deal with the American Air Force to partnership in researching odd bits of metal that have been found. Oh, I don't. I don't understand any of this shit. I he I struggle with him. You know, I've got his book. Oh, you said you got it. I've got his book. I've started reading it, but so far, I must admit, I'm only very early into the book. It's just recounting. Uh, Known events of yep. of abductions and sightings. So that was another thing I was I found during the week. So abductions. Apparently, there's an agreement between the American government and the aliens that they're allowed to to abduct two hundred and something people a year, as long as we get some technology out of it. Oh, is that the? <laughs> I love these. Ring I ding love ding those ding stories. Baby. They're uh, the best. What abduction stories? Oh, I've got the best one for you. Oh, here Ring we go. a ding ding, yeah, baby. I've got the best one story. Uh, I have got the best abduction story ever. This one, no bullshit. You ready for this one? Have you heard of Barney and Betty Hill? Yes. You have heard of it? Yes. They're, they're actually one of the big ones that they the, go to. The, the, this is the big, this is the fucking big. This is the big one. I don't know if we've got time for this. This is big, right? They were an American couple who claimed they were abducted by extraterrestrials in a rural portion of the state of New Hampshire from September 19th to 20th, 1961. It was the first widely publicized report of an alien abduction in the United States. The incident came to be called Hill Abduction, 
and the Zeta Reticuli incident because the couple stated they'd been kidnapped by aliens who claimed to be from Zeta Reticuli system. Their story was adapted into the best-selling 1966 books, The Interrupted Journey, and the 1975 television movie, The UFO Incident. In September 2016, plans were announced to make a film based on the events. They're the big one. They're the big one. They reckon of all the abductions ever to be told, these guys were 100% the most legit. Yes. They, they, their name is yeah, the benchmark for... They reckon they're the biggest. I've, I've been wanting to talk to you about Benny and... Benny their name and pops Hill. up regularly. Oh, it's the, it's, mate, this is the big, the big tamale, from, man. From, from memory, they've been, had they been abducted more than once? Uh, I thought they'd been abducted were twice. Were they wasn't it? abducted more than once? Because you, because they're African. Well, Barney's African American, so I would doubt he would want to lie during that period of oh, American in the history. 60s, God, no, you would not say shit. So he's saying stuff. Um, yeah, no, their name pops up regularly. So it says, according to a variety of reports given by the Hills, the alleged UFO sightings happened on September nineteenth. 1961, around 10.30 p.m., the Hills were driving back to Portsmouth from a vacation in Niagara Falls and in, and Montreal. Just south of Lancaster, New Hampshire, Betty claimed to have observed a bright light, a bright point of light in the sky that moved from below the moon and planet Jupiter upward to the west of the moon. That's very specific. Don't know how she would know I that. I think that's one of the reasons, because they remembered lots of details. Yeah. While Barney navigated US Route 3, Betty reasoned that she was observing a falling star, only it moved upward. Since it moved erratically and grew bigger and brighter, Betty urged Barney to stop the car from for a closer look, as well as to walk their dog, Delsley. Cool name for a dog, Delsley. Barney st- stopped at a picnic area just south of Twin Mountain. Betty looked through the binoculars observed an odd-shaped craft flashing multicolored lights travel across the face of the moon. Because her sister had several years earlier said she had seen a flying saucer, Betty thought it might be what she was observing. Through binoculars, Barney observed what he reasoned was a commercial airliner traveling toward Vermont on its way to Montreal. However, he soon changed his mind because without looking as if he had turned, the craft rapidly descended in his direction this observation caused Barney to realize the object was a plane. What that was a plane was not a plane. They quickly returned to the car and drove towards Francocia North Notch, a narrow mountainous stretch of the road. The hills claim they continued driving on the isolated road, moving slowly through Frank, Franconia Notch in order to observe the object as it came even closer. At one point, the object cl- passed above a restaurant and signal tower on top of Cannon Mountain. So this thing's fucking with them. This thing's messing with her, man. Yep. And came out near Old Man of the Mountain. Betty testified that it was at least one and a half times the length of a granite cliff profile, which was 40 feet, 12 meters long, and that it seemed to be rotating. The couple watched as the silent, illuminated craft moved erratically and bounced back and forth in the night sky. Wow. So he basically... He... Carrying a pistol in his pocket, he stepped away from the vehicle, moved close to the object using the binoculars. Betty claimed to have seen eight to ten, eight to eleven humanoid figures. <laughs> Fuck. Who were peering out of the craft's window, seeming to look at him in unison. All but one figure moved to what appeared to be a panel at the rear of the hallway. That encircled the portion of the craft. The one remaining figure continued to look at Barney and communicate a message telling him to stay where you are and keep looking. Barney had a recollection of observing the humanoid forms wearing glossy black uniforms and black capes. Ring a ding hell. ding, baby. That's right. Red lights and what appear to be bat wing things began to telescope out of the side of the craft and a long structure descended from the bottom of the craft. Shit. The silent craft approached to what Barney estimated was within 50 to 80 feet. Uh, he basically goes, beings were somehow not human. Uh, he basically says they're going to capture us. And then they drove away at high speed, telling Betty to look for the object. She rolled down the window and looked up. Almost immediately, Hills heard a rhythmic si- series of beeping and buzzing sounds, which they seemed to bounce off the trunk of the vehicle. 
Uh, then they s- oh shit. The car vibrated and a tingling sensation passed through the hills' bodies. The hills said that they then experienced the onset of an altered state of consciousness that left their minds dulled. A second series of buzzing sounds returned the couple to full consciousness. They found out that they had travelled nearly 35 miles, 56 kilometres south, but had only fake spotty memories of the section of the road. They record making a sudden unplanned turn, encountering a roadblock and observed a fiery orb in their road. Fuck in hell. And that's not even covering the dream she had because Betty had some, um, I think it was about 10 or 15 days later, she had not, I think it was five or six nights of some really vivid dreams that she started taking notes on and she's been, what's that, hypnotised. Hypnotised, yeah. Hypnotised a few times to go back and look at these dreams and they're quite like in-depth and intricate dreams about the inside of the spaceship. So they're actually really quite yeah. famous in that circle. They, it says that they reconstructed the chron- chronology of events as they witnessed the UFO and drove home. But immediately after they heard the buzzing sounds, their memories became incomplete and fragmented. After sleeping for a few hours, Betty aro- awoke and placed the shoes and clothing she had worn during the drive in her closet, observing the dress that was torn at the hem, zipper and lining. Later, she was retrie- went, later when she retrieved the items from her closet, she noted a pinkish powder on her dress. She hung the clothes in a dress on her clothesline and the pink powder blew away. But the dress was irreparably irreparably damaged. She then threw it away. But she changed her mind. Fucking hell. This is insane. Oh man. yeah, that was a that's a big rabbit hole. This is a big rabbit hole. I can't do this rabbit hole now. Fuck me dead. This is bigger than time travel. That's insane. There's actually more information about them than there is about time travel. That's that's quite yeah. Well, I'd heard about this because I was watching a Rogan podcast once, and they were talking about abductions. I didn't realize so down on that, you know, getting stuck in the rabbit holes where you get stuck into you yeah. see some weird stuff. There's like four hundred plus abduction reports per year. Yeah, it's it's significant. It's it's significant, but apparently this is the first well known. That was one of the first ones in yeah. the US. And a re- and the big thing with this is is that it's very detailed, and and her dreams, which were her, detailed, the inside of the sh- shaft. Yeah, um, d- there was something weird about him as well. What was it about him? They did something to him. Well, it says here that in a six-hour interview, the Hills related all they could remember of the UFO encounter. Barney asserted that he had developed a sort of mental block, and that he suspected there were some portions of the event he did not wish to remember. He described in detail all he could remember about the craft and the appearance of the somehow not human figures aboard the craft. Webb stated that they were telling the truth and the incident probably occurred exactly as reported, except for minor uncertainties and technicalities that must be tolerated in any such observations where human judgment is involved, e.g. time, length of visibility, etc. And then it goes, then you've got Betty's dreams here. Yeah. Yeah. And Betty's dreams are quite documented. There was something else, but I can't remember. So 10 days after the UFO encounter, she started having these vivid dreams, it says. Um, Yeah. She says, in one dream, she and Barney encountered a roadblock and men men who surrounded their car. She lost consciousness but struggled to regain it. She then realized that she was being forced by two small men to walk into a forest in the nighttime and of seeing Barney walking behind her. Though Though when she called to him... He seemed to be in a trance or sleepwalking. The men stood about five feet to five four to five feet four inches tall, wore matching blue uniforms, at, with cape cap similar to those worn by military cadets. They appeared nearly human with black hair, dark eyes, prominent noses, and bluish lips. Their skin was a grayish color. Whoa, that sounds like um, the reports you hear about Blue Book. This is Project Blue Book. Yeah, well, that's another big fucking rabbit hole. Well, Project Blue Book, that description that she's giving, that description pops up quite regularly as the pe- the guys that, from Project Blue Book. They had a, a, a slightly grey skin, uh, blue uniforms. It's actually quite... Is it? Because mm. then it goes on in the dreams, Betty, Barney and the men walk up in a upper ramp into a dish-shaped craft of metallic appearance. Once inside, Betty and Barney were separated. She protested and she was told by the man she called the leader that if she and Barney were examined together, it would take much longer to conduct the exam. She and Barney were then taken to separate rooms. Betty then dreamt that a new man, similar to the others, entered, 
entered to conduct the, her exam with a leader. Betty called this new man the examiner, and she had a pleasant, calm manner. Oh, he had a pleasant, calm manner. Though the leader and the examiner spoke to her in English, the examiner's command of the language seemed imperfect, and she had difficulty understanding him. Whoa, fuck. The examiner then told Betty that he would conduct a few tests to note the differences between humans and the craft's occupants. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. He seated her on a chair and a bright light was shone on her. Fucking hell. Yeah, so the people she's describing sound like the age... When the, everyone refers to agents from Project Blue Book, they yeah. all say the same sort of thing. He, he, sa- he saved the trimmings from her fingernails. After examining her legs and feet, the man used a dull knife similar to a letter opener to sc- what to scrape some of her skin onto what resembled cellophane. He then tested her nervous system and then thrust the needle into her navel, which caused Betty agonizing pain, whereupon the leader waved his hand in front of her eyes and the pain vanished. Fucking hell. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, then she got medical help. She went. She got medical help. Did she? Yeah, apparently... Uh, apparently... Uh, yeah, subject of hypnosis came... They reckon she was hypnotised. Um, yeah, this this is very fucking deep. This is a rabbit hole of rabbit holes, which I've not really gone into much. You, the, I'm looking at you from the other end of the desk, oh. and you're like you're getting lost Man, in it, you're getting oh, sucked no, in. No, no, missing time. That's a common theme with abductions: missing time. time. Like they they think that they were only gone 15 oh, minutes yeah. or something like that, and yet hours and hours have gone. And she's claiming here, Betty is claiming that she's missed time was, multiple it was times. Three days, wasn't it? Yeah, it was over three days, but she believes it was only a few hours. Um, yeah, this is insane. I have to go into this more, but fucking hell. I, I didn't know if you knew about that. Oh, yeah, they're, they're pretty pretty big. That's the biggest one. And the reason why people believe it, and I hate bringing it up, but at that time in the 60s, being African-American, you don't say shit. Well, it's a mixed-race marriage. It's a, it was a mixed-race marriage, 60s, yeah. That was, Imagine how big that would have been. Mixed-race marriage in the 60s. With a dog. Ring-a-ding-ding, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but can you imagine, like, you wouldn't say shit, but they must have been, uh, from my understanding, they had to get medical help, particularly Betty. I think she was quite... Injured, yeah. She mentally, she wasn't mentally, well. she wasn't well, but I think physically, she needed help. Um, and so that's how it all came up. I think that's how they is that how they got went, how the authorities got I, I wind of it. I, it's, I haven't really looked into it. I know of them and I've heard of them, I've read a couple of their things, but I don't know how they went to the police or the hospital. I, th- I think, yeah, I think they might have gone to the hospital because she was not well, she was suffering quite badly with injuries. We'll have to have a look at that. We'll have to have that's all. Stay, stay tuned, folks. We'll have a look at that. Oh, yeah. Basil, have you ever read the book Communion? So that's about uh, the abductions. No. Yeah. Ooh. Alien abductions. Ooh, I'm going camping. I, <laughs> I, always, I always like a good book for Are camping. Are you oh, fucking? I wouldn't be reading that shit camping. That's when they'll get you the aliens. They'll get you. Nah, we're in Australia, dude. We're <laughs> oh. pretty safe, unless you're in Nevada. I mean. Yeah, maybe that's the part that I always find strange is the concentration of UFO sightings in America compared to well, the rest of the world. I mean, we've got, was it Rendlesham in England, which yep. is probably their biggest UFO report? Well, you know, there's a, I only found, excuse me, I only found this out last night while I was researching the other topic. Yes. No clues here, but. Rendlesham will pop up a fair bit. In well, Rend- is that what they call the Welsh Roswell? That's the that's the Welsh Roswell. It's called the it? Rendlesham event. Is that what's that? Is that a UFO crash? Yes, it's actually um, not only is it a UFO. Well, it wasn't a crash actually. It was a UFO that was in a forest. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, well, well haven't you looked into no, Rendlesham? No, no. Oh. Is that more rabbit holes? That's a, that's that's not a rabbit hole. That's a Niagara Falls hole because it? it's actually it's the only UFO sighting. It's really well documented by the English military. There's actually a tape recording of 
so one of the guys who was doing it actually had his tape personal tape recorder with him and was recording up by up blow by blow details of this thing um yeah it's the only one only ufo reporting out of england that's actually been the us the us no it's not us uk military has actually done a report on and that has been released to the public. Because the theory about why the US gets so much traffic, particularly in the uh, 50s and 60s and thereabouts, is that the, 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 the belief is, is that the atomic bombs that were being dropped by the U- US military after World War II was attracting UFOs. They or the nuclear. Interest, the, the interest of UFOs. They love that. It's like, you know, bees to honey. And so... It makes, uh, it makes me think of the other night when you um, almost... Watch yourself laughing when I said that to you during F1. What What was that? When I was like, we were having the uh, F1 race the other week and yeah. I was like, yeah, they like nuclear power and you pissed yourself. Oh, they come out of nuclear power. You heard me wrong or something. I said, yeah, some bullshit you said and I pissed myself. Yeah, but that's the reason why they believe that there's so much traffic in, in, that, America. in America because after World War II, the US was dropping a lot of nuclear bombs for testing um, because of the Cold War pretty much. And uh, that's where that the, the, the number of UFOs were being sighted. It was increased. And uh, that's why Roswell was apparently a thing because there was an air base near there. Yeah. Um, it's weird. It's weird. It's very weird. But what I didn't know when I was doing a bit of digging for the other research, we, the other topic we want to talk about at another time, we won't do it now, is that apparently there's a thing called the Welsh Roswell. Yeah, which is Rendlesham. Which is that? Which is a crash? Is it? A, it's a, you're not so much a crash. It was a UFO in the middle of the forest, forest that was um, the base. It was next to a military base in a really big forest, and is very well documented. Oh fucking hell! The rabbit holes are so deep. I can't. Is it? A, is it a quick one or is it a long one? Oh no, she's a big one. Oh. <laughs> we'll have to leave it. Yeah, no, well, no, no, definitely no. not one covering today. No, we'll no leave. chance no. in hell. We'll leave it. I we'll think, leave it. I think this is almost over because oh, I, I, I can see you fidgeting and I've started fidgeting. Oh, up. yeah, it's time for a piss. Oh, alkaline water. Alkaline water, man. Alkaline it's, water. Yeah, my last of my, the last of my alkaline water, so we're safe now. Oh, cool. But so yeah. I'll just have this piss and I should be good for the rest of the day. Oh, yeah, you'll be dehydrated after this. <laughs> you'll be fine. You know what, Rocker Russell? Let's leave it there. Thanks for thanks for talking about time travelers and other crap. I love how we just wrapped it up very quickly and said it's shit. And if you come across time travel people that claim that they're time travelers, it, it, it sounds so wacky, but it actually is as wacky as it sounds. It's, no, it's it, just silly. It's just silly. It's one of those ones, isn't it? But it is. You'd love to believe, but I just there's nothing out um, there that makes me want to believe. But I don't know why. Okay. If you're a time traveller, apart from coming back as, as a curiosity to see what history was like for you, why would you do it? Uh, unless the only one that I actually understand is the guy that made all the money. Yep. The, the stock market guy. Because he's said to himself, you know what? If I go back I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years or whatever it is, I can make a shit ton of money in a time that's – white." because everyone says around the 20, 30, 40 mark, shit goes down and the world is not a great place. Right, things are not great, and there's another time travel. Is it twenty one hundred, two thousand one hundred? He comes back. One? He comes back, and he says there's a massive world war, and there's a, a massive incident, and the world is not a great place at all. And uh, he comes back in time to be more comfortable. And so the only one that I believe is someone like that. Even so, though what you tell me is um like the Earth is becoming Florida for people in the future. Uh, Come back here to retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know we'll what? You know what? Travel and retire. You know what? That's exactly what it's like. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like um, Total Recall, <laughs> where if you want like memories of better years, just go back in time and you'll actually see them physically. You can actually live it. Yep. So it is like a holiday resort. Time travel. Go Arnie. I oh, know. Go Arnie. Go Arnie. Well, I'm done. Done. Rocket Russell, thank you very much for coming in. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, man. I appreciate it as always. Thanks for supporting us in the things that you always do. You know that. Don't forget to buy shirts, people. Yeah, shop.inverti.net. Prof, sorry, revenue goes to really, really good it cause. It does. It goes to a sensational cause. And I, I, it's good quality shit, man. It, the shit's good. I'm telling you now, I, I, would, not, I would not put my, my faith or my name against shit. And this stuff I actually personally want myself. Yes. Right? Well, I've personally ordered myself, yeah. so, you know. 
I'm, oh. a bit, I'm a bit annoyed that somebody wasn't here today. But yeah, yeah, some little prick let you down, but that's another story for another day. But yeah. he'll be back. He'll be back. Maybe. Because we've got to do the other one and he wants to be part of the other uh, one. He might have to fucking sit that one out too. So we might have to see what happens. Thank you for the two people that have been listening to this bullshit podcast. Thank you, for Dad, for letting you shoes your garage. I'm sorry I wanted about fucking time travel. I'm obsessed about it. You know, I always want to go back to the 80s. I fucking hate now. It's fucking shit. We want to believe. I wanted to believe so fucking bad that the time travel was real that I only had to wait eight more fucking years in 2028 so I can actually get in a time machine and fuck off and go back to 1985. Could now, But I know I'd be dead. Could I wouldn't you imagine your long. console collection then? Oh, can you imagine I could be like a... You like, can have them fresh oh, you know in what I brand did? new inbox. Yeah, but you know, I'd get... Oh, exactly. I'd go back to every fucking Toys R Us or toy shop and I'd get all the video game consoles and the fresh it in the box and come back to this time and make a mint. But not only that, I'd be a smart ass saying, you can forget about your Sega, your Sega Mega Drive. In a couple of years, there'll be a thing called a PlayStation. And everyone will go, oh, who makes that? Sony right. does. And everyone will go... Huh? I don't think that's real. But I'll be the true king. I'll be the time traveler. I'll, tra- I'll be what Marty McFly couldn't be. The time traveling console king. I'll be the fucking king of that bullshit. I, and I'll, I'll get rid of Biff. That's the first thing I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have Biff. Man. Oh, yeah, too. Fucking Biff. You got to have Biff. Absolutely. Thank you, Dad, for letting us use your garage. I'm sorry. Oh, I already did that. Oh, yep. well. So that's a that's time loop. Up. It's Fuck. a time loop. <laughs> you fucked me up. It's a time loop. <sighs> and until the next episode, we'll have some more retro to my more bullshit. But until then, you can roll, roll it, monkeys. monkeys.